surrounded by wrestling fans. Not, not sports entertainment fans. Professional wrestling fans. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. This is the Wrestling Man's Podcast. A podcast that stands up for professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters. So join the revolution. Because the revolution is now. Hey, start the show. World, look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. We are ICW and you're going to know our name. Here we, here we, here we fucking go. Gentlemen, wrestling fans, professional wrestling fans, and ICW Mafia and Wrestling Matters Podcast fans, welcome to another edition of the ICW Podcast. On behalf of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, my name is Anthony Walker, the H, the E, to the A, to that D. And on this week, we're going to talk about ICW, as we always do. ICW, because Insane Championship Wrestling, the number one promotion in the UK. Dare I say the number one promotion in the world. Based in Scotland, Glasgow, Scotland, in that fact. And today's show, we're going to talk about their their April 18th, 2015 sh- show, which was part of the Entertainment System Tour, called Paperboy. And uh, yeah, without further ado, we'll get right into it, because it kicked off this pay-per-view, this pay-per-view. This uh, show kicked off with Jack Gallagher versus Lionheart versus Noam Dar versus Mark Coffey. Now, Mark comes out and cuts a promo, says he dedicates the match to Jackie Polo, because Jackie had an injury, defending the tag titles and everything. He had a uh, cheekbone, fractured cheekbone. Takes a dig at Lionheart by saying his injury, the neck injury that he was that he suffered from uh, AJ Styles and the uh, Styles Clash was fake. Did not sit well with Lionheart, and Lionheart just basically super kicks him and knocks him clean out, nearly. Lionheart throws Jamie outside, then goes for a drop kick on Dar, but Dar drop kicks his leg. Then Dar takes a nasty drop kick in the corner from Jamie. Coffey throwing forearms on all three opponents. Dar walks into Coffey's dead wish. Then the Coffey takes a boot from Jamie. Coffey gets low blowed three times. A very awkward way as well. It was like they were using the kicks. And when you go to kick somebody and they grab out of you, they swang the leg and it hit Coffey, like I said, low blowed Coffey. And uh, it, that happened on three occasions. Even the referee got involved as well on that. Uh, Lionheart hits rock bottom on Jamie Gallagher. Dar hits Jamie with two forearms, then dives on Coffey. And Lionheart gets a near. And Lionheart as well gets a near fall double leg lock and bar sleeper combo by all three members all the members all four members even in fact on that one dead wish clothesline diving forearm gets the win for coffee on Lionheart uh, really wasn't that much to to work about because it was like I said it was a short match for a fit or four way because it really was fast paced but they could have made it just a little little bit longer other than that it was a good match to kick off now Liam Thompson considering what he did at the Paramania show when he attacked Carmel that didn't sit too kindly to one Kaylee Ray who although they didn't see eye to eye in the ring her and Carmel they were best friends and Kaylee Ray even though it was and it was advertised that Kaylee Ray would confront somebody else but it didn't take a genius to know who it was it was Liam Thompson Liam comes out and says he does not have to explain himself to anyone then calls out Kaylee Ray Kaylee Ray basically comes out and says she's going to kick Liam's balls so far up his body, so far up his throat, that he'll be choking on them. Somewhere round about that. A little extreme, but hey. Liam says he does not have a problem hitting women and slaps her. Kaylee Ray kicks his head off and gets a near fall. Heel kick gets Kaylee Ray near fall. Like a springboard heel kick, I think. Kaylee Ray gets two near falls, stick and move, then gets wiped out. Kaylee Ray gets a near fall and then gets wiped out again. Liam dissing 
Kaylee Ray but is in control. Liam wasting time with the crowd but in control of Kaylee Ray then makes a mistake and Kaylee fights back and hits a sunset flip and a roll up and gets near falls on both of them. Kaylee Ray dives on Liam outside. Second rope drop kick from Kaylee Ray gets a near fall. Two piger two two piger bombs. Two tiger bombs. Wow, let's talk about a blooper. Two Tiger Bombs gets a near fall for Liam. Liam gets a chair and uses it on the Kaylee Ray. The backcracker on Kaylee Ray gets Liam the win. Liam then chokes out, uses the, the top end of the chair to choke Kaylee Ray with it. And as that happens, the Bucky Boys come out and chase him away. Liam then cuts a promo with a big smile and proud of what he achieved. Speaking of the Bucky Boys... The Bucky Boys were up next in a tag match against the New Age Click, BT Gun and Wolfgang. A brawl start the match. Davy Boy proving to be qu- to be too quick for Wolfgang, showing great double team by the Bucky Boys. BT grounding Stevie Boy with an armbar, then a front face lock. But quick, this allows Stevie Boy to hit a neck breaker and a. Get a near fall. Double team also gets a near fall. Bucky's in control. Davy Boy looking f- to, for a dive. Wolf stops that. The Wolf Gang stops that in his tracks. BT grounding Davy Boy. Quickness on BT allows Nikki allows the NK back in control. Oh, NK sh- showing great double team. BT getting a near fall. Davy Boy in a hell of a lot of trouble. Great basic tag team wrestling by the two cousins from the NK. Wolfgang and BT Gun, uh, NAK in full control. Wolfgang gets a near fall off a neck breaker. Davy Boy power bombs Wolfgang out of the corner to create space and gets Stevie Boy in for the tag. And Stevie Boy proving he is one step ahead and the fight back is on. Standing shooting star press gets a near fall for the Buckies. A super kick rocks BT. Punch rocks uh, Stevie Boy. Then a slingshot cutter, which is on the. He's on, Stevie Boy's on the apron, he slingshots him back in and then drops him with a cutter and gets a near fall. A spear by Davy Boy, blood missed by BT into Davy Boy's eyes, Wolfgang power bombs, then clover leaves uh, him and then BT l- hits a cross face on Davy Boy as well. Wolfgang has got the uh, clover leaf on him and gets the tap out. NAK win the match. The Bucky Boys, however, are not happy with the loss backstage and wonder what they're going to do next. And considering what Stevie Boy saw before the tag match, he was so pissed he ended up calling out Liam Thompson and says he's coming for him. He knew that Kaylee Ray could take care of herself, but wasn't taken too kindly to it and he's going to fight Kaylee Ray's honour at some point because he basically called out Liam Thompson. So the bad boy has got Stevie Boy up his rear end. Now for the main event of the first half of the show, which was Chris Renfrew, the leader of the NAK, going one-on-one with the legend that is Sabu. We had started this match because it was a little bit of chain wrestling to start off, feeling our process, so even, uh, so far. Slingshot, double leg drop, near fall, Sabu then locks in the camel clutch. Big clothesline gets a near fall from Renfrew. Classic Sabu chair offense. The fight is on the outside. Fight gets taken into the crowd. Doesn't last long. Sabu brings a table into play. Renfrew hit the ring post very hard. He hit that on a couple of occasions while he was on the out- while they were on the outside fighting. Renfrew hits a stun and gets a near fall. Renfrew gets a chair to the knee. Then Sabu hits Air Sabu. Then Arabian face buster and gets a near fall. Sabu looks to put. Chris through a table, Renfrew hits a top rope stunner and gets a near fall. Sabu using the chair to his advantage sets up Chris on the table and then goes to the top rope and hits a top rope Arabian face buster or as Joey Styles once called it, top rope Arabian skull crusher and gets the win. Great little match, could have went on a little bit longer in my mind but Hey, it was supposed to be a dream match because people wanted to see this match between Chris Renfrew and Sabu, but it just didn't live up to the hype in probably so many people's minds. I liked it, however, but I think the pe- I think the crowd would want of that to go on just a little bit longer, just to you know build it out a little bit. But all in that was a good match and a good first half of the show. And with that being said, ladies and gents, I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be back right after this with part two. 
so stay tuned. For new episodes of the Wrestling Matters podcast, as well as other great professional wrestling related content, be sure to check out the Wrestling Matters channel on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters. You'll get weekly episodes of the podcast and you'll get other great wrestling content as well. Be sure to check it out, subscribe, like, and do all that good stuff. The Wrestling Matters channel where wrestling matters on YouTube. If you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out the Wrestling Matters podcast Facebook fan page at www.facebook.com forward slash WM podcast. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. If you're a fan of the Wrestling Matters podcast, be sure to check out the the Wrestling Matters podcast Twitter page at WM podcast for news, reviews, and upcoming episodes, and you will be let known on various other topics as well in the world of professional wrestling. So if you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, be sure to follow the Wrestling Matters Podcast on Twitter at WM Podcast. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. Be sure to tune in every single Tuesday now for the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra where I'll be hosting a podcast on one promotion and one promotion only. I C W Insane Championship Wrestling, the hottest promotion in Scotland, where I'll be reviewing their shows. Oh my god! god. Talking ICW. That's 1314! And who knows, maybe get some guests on. So be sure to tune in to the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra ICW Podcast. Insane Championship Wrestling every Tuesday on YouTube, Podomatic, Stitcher Radio. Download it free at iTunes, Mixcloud, and Soundcloud. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. World, look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. We are ICW and you're gonna know our name. Here we, here we, here we fucking go! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of the ICW podcast. That's right. And part two, and we'll get right into it, guys. Part two kicked off with a tag team match. Global Bollocks. Fucking epic name for a tag team. Global Bollocks, Global Hero Joe Henry, and the Bollocks, as he's known in ICW, Kenny Williams, squared off against the 55 members of Kid Fight and Shah Samuels. Now, as always, as they always do, guys, the 55, the 55 waste no time jumping Global Bollocks, but Henry and Williams show great teamwork to fight that off. Kenny dives on the 55. Henry showing great power with a suplex. And a great suplex, one of them hanging, hanging vertical suplexes. Uh, Kid Fight tagged in, showing great strength to slow down Kenny Williams, and now the 55 is in control. 55 slowing Kenny down. Tags in and out, 55 in control, showing great tag team wrestling, gets a near fall on Kenny. Kenny in a lot of trouble. Two knees to create space to tag in. Henry Butchar stops that, and Williams is in a hell of a lot of trouble. Tag both sides, Henry mounts a fight back. A great... Um, DDT. It was one of them, uh, I think Shah went to swing for him and he ducks under and he like swings it into a DDT, which was beautiful, and gets a near fall with it. Henry hits the freak of nature on Shah. Spitting back elbow gets Williams a near fall. Kid Fight hits the DOA, which is a brain buster, and gets a near fall. 55 hit a double team low blow and Kid Fight gets the pin on Kenny to win. And the 55 win the match. And basically, they say they got screwed out the tag titles and say Polo Promotions are dead. <laughs> you worked that one out yourself. Big Demo versus the bastard Dave Mastiff. Now, fuck me. If you haven't got ICW on demand, go and get it. I, I keep on, I'll keep on repeating this, guys, because it's, it's fact. Everybody should have ICW on demand. 375 a month, and I swear to God, you're going to see a fight. If you see the paper, this Paperboy show, watch this match in particular, because this was just a fight. These two, Big Demo, The Beast, versus The Bastard, Dave Mastiff. Forearm back and forth fight to start off. Demo gets slammed. Dave hits a dropkick, and Demo goes to the outside. The Bastard takes the fight to Demo on the outside. Mastiff in control, but Demo fights back. Hard hitting offense, which was the story of the match, basically. I mean, these two practically beat the hell out of each other. You know, hard hitting stuff. You weren't going to expect any great technical wrestling in this match. It was just a flow blown, a flow blown fight. Well, that wasn't easy to say. Uh, Demo suplex mass. 
uh, Dave Mastiff gets a near fall. Damo drop kicks Mastiff in the corner, sets up for the Van Dominator. Yes, the Van Dominator, which is the Van Dominator to you, you and I. But Mastiff gets up and unloads with uppercut, and about 10 uppercuts in a row, rocking uh, Damo. Mastiff hits a German suplex and gets a near fall, then a clothesline and he gets a near fall with that. Demo hits the welly go round and gets a near fall. The Dublin drop gets Demo another near fall. Demo takes the fight to Dave, then gets suplexed into the corner. Mastiff hits the cannonball and gets the victory. And then after the match, these two were 1-1 from what happened last year as well, because this was uh, Demo Mastiff 2. This was built in, and then they challenge, and then Demo challenges Mastiff to finish this off in London, which will be next week's podcast, which I will review next week's podcast, um, in London, and the winner gets a shot at the Drew Galloway basically for the world title. Even though Demo scheduled to face Galloway, he put he put it on the line to face uh, Dave one more time, and if Dave could beat him, he would take he would get a shot at Galloway. So, like I said, I'll review that next week on the show. The next match after that was Trent Sev- Seven, which was making his ICW debut, versus Mikey Whiplash. Now, feeding out chain wrestling to start, Mikey gets Trent on the mat with an arm bar, then Trent hits Mikey with a hard forearm. Trent one step ahead, taking the fight to Mikey on the outside. Hard chops on Mikey, then Trent then uh, Trent tr- chops a ring post, and Mikey works on the end the hand of Trent. Now, let me just say this to you. If you listen to the Wrestling Matters podcast and you listen to my interview that I did with uh, Johnny Ferrari, right? I swear to God, okay, we talked on the interview that I did about chops and how they were no joke. And they're not. They're not a joke, okay? They suck. And I've got living proof of that on my phone, okay, of what happened to me last in July 25th, 2014 in Billingham. They me, they where I'm living. I participated in a Royal Rumble, well let's just face it, it wasn't a pretty sight after the match, if you know what I'm saying. Well, if you can imagine getting if chopping somebody on the chest, imagine what it's like to chop a ring post. <laughs> because that would be ten times worse. Ask Trent on that one. Fight on the stage, biting the fingers on Trent, that was Mikey. Uh, fight back in the ring, Mikey in control, working on the hand of Trent. A cartwheel chop by Trent goes f- for it again but runs into a boot by Mikey. Mikey cuts the legs from Trent, and then Trent goes face first into the apron. Back and forth match, Trent suplexes Mikey on the outside onto the ramp, and both men hit hard, and you could tell by the effects because they were both bleeding. Mikey was bleeding from the back. Uh, Trent was bleeding from the arm and had a bruise on the arm and everything. Oh, my God. It's one thing to suplex somebody from the inside to the outside on the padded mat and everything, but fuck me, that must have knacked. Because that was a metal ramp that he suplexed them on, guys. It was like it was like a metal ramp coming down, coming down like, in like a diagonal way, like if it was like a forward slash. It was coming down from the ramp there and... Fucking Trent suplexes Mikey on the way. Jesus Christ. Slugfest in the middle of the ring. Slapfest. Straight out fight. Trent hits a clothesline and gets a near fall. Snap German. Then a power driver gets Trent a near fall. Much to his shock. Trent will not quit. And then one mistake leads to another. One move leads to another. And Mikey hits the zombie maker for the win. Great match. And like I say, the the highlight of that match was the suplex onto the ramp. I mean, Jesus Christ. If I ever take the one of that, yeah, God help me if I ever take one of them in my if I ever wrestle. Jesus. Anyway, moving on from that. ICW World Heavyweight Title Match. Now, this was originally scheduled to be Gredo versus Jack Jester with Drew Galloway as the referee. But Mr. Galloway being the ICW Heavyweight Champion of the World had other ideas. He wasn't up for being the referee. So he made it a World Heavyweight Championship match. So basically it was Grado and Jack's lucky lucky night, ladies and gents, because they got a title shot. Numbers game as double team on Jester starts the match, then Grado gets thrown to the outside. Jester and Galloway go toe to toe, then Jester turns around and gets a close line from Grado. Galloway and Grado slowing things down, displaying some wrestling. Double cross body allows Jester on the offense, Jester in control of Grado. Jester goes for a German, Grado is like, what the fuck? He just stood there. Alright, Grado's a, a, a big lad in himself. Jack's strong, goes for the gem, and Grado's like, the fuck? Looks like he's watching everything, and then mocks him. But And, he asks, and then Grado asks him to go for it again. I said, do you want to try one more time? And Jack's like, I just clobbers him from behind. It was just fuck. While that was happening, Grado, 
Uh, Jester goes for a gem and yeah, da, 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 hits him from behind and as that was happening as well Drew comes in and attacks Jack. While that was happening Grado comes in and catapults Jack. Like if he picks his legs up, like if, he was, like if Cesaro was going for the swing, Grado picks the legs up, goes to catapult uh, Jack like if he was going to hit him in the ring post but instead of hitting him in the ring post Jack's head drives right in to Grado into Drew Galloway's uh, champion jewels, so to speak. His balls, if you will. And it's just a very unique way of using that. Grado hits a rolling slice on Jack on Jack Chester on the outside. Galloway is standing tall, wipes whips Grado over into the fans going toe to toe in the crowd. All three guys are in the crowd, both men fighting Grado, then Drew goes for Jack. Uh, and then slams him right into the wall using the wall as a weapon. Match back in the ring, Jack in control. Grado low blows Jack, then uses his weapon against him, then does it again. Grado goes hardcore on Jack, like Jack would use if he was like driving that uh, catapult that he carries right into the, the opponent's face. Well, Grado did it to him. Jack back in control, and then Jack is about to do the same thing to Grado, but Drew comes in, uses a weapon, hits him with a chair, and then whacks Grado with a chair and gets a near fall. Drew in the tree of Ro Woe, Jack goes for a suplex on Grado. Drew sits up and Germans suplexes Jack while he's suplexing Grado. Jack and Drew go toe to toe. Grado goes, for, goes up on top and hits a roller slice on both of them and gets a near fall on Drew. Grado hits another rolling slice on both men while they're both sat in the corner. Grado misses the wee boot, then Jack walks on... Well, Grado misses the wee boot on Jack, walks right into a single leg drop kick by Drew. Jack hits the future shock on on the chair on Grado. Drew comes in, throws Jack outside, and then takes the win for himself and retains the ICW World Championship. Drew gives Jack a free shot with the chair. Jack throws the chair into, into Drew's face, grabs the belt, the ICW World title, walks away with it while he's jaw adjusting to the crowd, and then as he's... You know, George has in the crowd or have his back turned to the entrance ramp or to the entrance curtain. Sabu comes out, whacks him with the chair, and he walks off the wood with the belt. Sabu whacked, the, whacked Jack with the uh, chair on two occasions, walks off with the belt, you know, and Trent's backstage thanking the fans and says he's up for another match. Thanking the fans in ICW and says he's up for another match with uh, Mikey, and then Drew is pissed and says, and basically calls out Sabu and says if he doesn't bring his belt to London with him, he says he's coming to London, he's going to face Jack and Sabu in a triple threat match, he will take his title back, and if Sabu doesn't take the belt, bring the belt with him, he's going to stab Sabu. Well, you want to know what happens? Find out next week on the podcast on that one. I enjoyed that, that was 4.5 out of 5, 9 out of 10 for that one, and that's about it for the ICW podcast, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Tune in next week for the London show and uh, make sure you check out the Wrestling Matters podcast as well episode 59 went up yesterday episode 60 will be next week and until next time guys my name is the Hair Anthony Walker thank you so much for listening ICW Mafia ICW for life ICW is where wrestling matters peace out